Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's Exploring by the Seat of Your Pants Hangout. My name is Joe Grabowski, and I'll be your host for today. And first of all, thank you so much for joining us. We are celebrating biodiversity this month, so today's virtual field trip is pretty much the perfect place we could be. So since 2014, Antomica has, been, has made it its mission to share the fascinating, hidden, and often misunderstood world of insects. So they believe that insects possess an outstanding ability to create a spark of curiosity and lead to a passion for lifelong learning and discovery. So they're located in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, but through the power of technology, we get to meet some of their uh, exotic insects today. So I believe we have Michael joining us today. Michael, how are you doing? I'm doing well, guys. I'm doing well, Joe, how about yourself? So with us today, we have Max. He's gonna be our tour guide. Good day, folks. And we got Cool Vendor, who's gonna be uh, taking a tour with Max today. So is everyone ready? Absolutely. All right. All well, right. Let's get started, Max. Welcome to Antomica, folks, and let's enter the magical world of bugs. So we are going to start first with our palm weevil. So here you go, cool in there. Yeah, sure. <laughs> oh. oh wow. So this is our palm weevil. Uh, they come from Indonesia. They're the largest weevils in the world. Uh, and you can tell it's a weevil because they have this very long snout here. And they have, unlike other bugs, their antennas are not on their face. They're on their nose here. So this is their proboscis. And they have extremely good grip. They're very, very strong. And they use these front grasping arms here to clamp on to palm trees. And then they bore into the tree with their little, with their snout here. They have sort of a, a little drill bit on the end and that enables them to push into the palm tree to access the sap, which they suck up. They have a big sweet tooth and they love to drink up the sap. And so weevils are a very common, uh, are very common uh, throughout the world. They have a big uh, diversity. And weevils are typically, uh, are known to be pest species. Many weevils uh, have become a pest for agriculture. Uh, and this one here has become a, a pest for uh, palm oil plantations, um, where they wreak, they wreak havoc on the palm trees. And so uh, they're part of the, the beetle order. They have a pair of hard wings. And underneath those hard wings, they have flying wings, which are folded up. And they kind of open up like a convertible, and then they can fly to the next palm tree. And you can tell this one's a girl because she has a nice, smooth nose. The boys have little bumps on, on, on the little ridges on their, their proboscis here. Very good. Looks very smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have a very soft uh, shell, a very soft exoskeleton. It, some people say it's almost uh, like velvet. Mm. It's very soft. It's amazing. Give it a try, Cool Binder. Yeah. Yeah, give it a try. It's very smooth, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now let's take a quick look at its belly before we, we put her back. Oh, and you can see she's got very good <laughs> yeah. grip. So this is her belly. <laughs> and she's waving. Hello! And yeah, very smooth on her body. And you can really see well how the, the, the joints of the bugs are made. So they have very similar an anatomy to us. They have, uh, this is sort of their hip right here. And then they have their, their, their femur their tibia, and their their feet right here. And they happen to have a little sticky pad as well as a little hook to help hold on to surfaces. Cool. And its eyes are right here on the side. They're, they're very hard to see. They're black. They blend in very well. They look kind of like uh, HD wraparound glasses. They're very big. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's move to the next one. Boy! Okay. Oh, uh, 
our our next bug is a very fascinating bug. It's a type of praying mantis. So mantises have developed a wide diversity of disguises to blend in with their environment. Some look like uh, like mosses or lichen. Others look like uh, blades of grass. Some look like fallen leaves. And some look like flowers. This one here is a very active young orchid mantis. Let's see if we can get her face in there. So she is just magnificent. What a stunning creature. Look at this gorgeous mantis. She is shaped like a, phal a phal phalaenopsis orchid. You can really see how her legs uh, mimic petals. And it's really amazing because this bug mimics a flower which mimics a bug. Now that's Nietzsche right there. All right, would you like to hold our, yeah. our orchid mantis cool in there? It's very beautiful, yeah. Yeah. So because she's still young, she loves to hop around a lot. Uh, and as she ages, she'll actually grow a pair of flying wings. And as she ages, her, her eyes will become a beautiful, deep purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the orchid mantis uh, blends in on orchid flowers or other similar looking flowers and it waits very patiently. It prays for food to come by and when an insect flies by or an insect walks on the flower, then its, predator, its predatory character becomes apparent and these front claws come out and grasp its prey quicker than the blink of an eye. And once you're stuck in these claws, there is no escape. It's dinner time. Seems to be hard to cope with there. Okay. Can I fly, man? Uh, currently, it can't fly, uh, but she hops a lot. But as she ages, uh, she's going to molt, and she'll have a, a flying, a functional flying pair of wings. Absolutely. And how much bigger do you think she'll get than she is right now? Uh, not much bigger. Maybe uh, about this big. Okay. You think we can test out that hopping ability? Oh, we certainly can. Put your hand, put your hand here, cool finger. Oh, oh, that's okay. That's one of their means of defense. They're so light, they they can uh, they can fall, and it doesn't hurt them. Okay, hop on over. Yeah, she's tired of hopping. Very good. She was, she was hopping a lot before I, I put her in her in her little vivarium there. Okay. In the in the mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, the next creature we have is a master at camouflage. So, we just saw how uh, predators will blend in with their environment um, to, to not be spotted by prey. These folks here are uh, herbivores and they are masters of blending in. They look like their favorite food, which happens to be guava leaves. So this is Phyllis the philium. 
and she comes from the Philippines. She's a beautiful leaf bug. Look at this beauty. Wow. So she has transformed her wings into a disguise. So th these are these are wings that have been modified to look like uh, like a, an old guava leaf. And why an old guava leaf, Max? Well, if you look like a like a tasty fresh guava leaf, you might have an, a herbivore come by and eat you. Mm. So it's good to blend in like uh, like old lettuce rather than fresh lettuce if you want to <laughs> look like vegetation. And so Phyllis is nocturnal. So during the day she sleeps. She sleeps all day, and then once the sun sets, then she becomes active. She starts moving in the tree and starts eating her favorite food, guava leaves. And so, uh, if. You, not only does it look like a leaf, yeah. it feels like a leaf. And it moves like a leaf. It'll swing uh, left and right to yeah. try to mimic wind movement. We can maybe try to make a dance. Eh, she's not too responsive right now. Maybe this is the this is the male, Phil. Maybe Phil will dance. No, oh, Phil doesn't dance. Either. <laughs> so they'll, they'll normally sway left and right uh, to mimic wind movement. You can see them side by side. You can see that the, the girl is much larger, and that's because she needs more room to uh, produce the eggs, and she needs more. Oh, and there Phil is taking off there. So she needs more more room to produce her eggs, uh, and it's more energy intensive, and so she, she needs a bigger body uh, for uh, egg business. Um, and so she's the, the way she's shaped, she's too big or heavy to fly, but the male here, he is much more slender, and he's capable of flying, as, as, you, as you saw. And so he has, oh, and there he goes. And so he has very long antennae to pick up chemicals that his girlfriend here sends him. So uh, insects. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow! I never see them being so active. Okay. Um, wow! <laughs> hey, tell me what you're gonna. So. Uh, yeah, they have very long antenna, and I don't know if you can see the detail on it, but on their antennas, they're they're kind of fluffy. They have little hairs that branch out, and that's to increase uh, the surface area so that they can pick up chemicals that are even in very, very small quantities present in the air. And that's how he can find uh, other bugs, for example. on to the next bug. So while you're making your way to the next bug, let's take a quick swing through our live classrooms and get one round of questions in. And then okay. after that, we'll meet the next bug. How's that sound? Perfect. Very good. All right. Excellent. So 
First of all, we have lots of groups watching online today, so please uh, use the YouTube chat sidebar. Let us know who you are and where you're watching from, and please do send in some questions. But for now, let's meet some of our live classrooms. So let's go first to Mrs. Danhoff's kindergarten class. They're joining us from Ohio. Let me turn their microphone on. Let's see. There they are. How's it going, kindergartens? Good. All right. Who has a question to get us started? Lots and lots of kindergartens in that classroom. What, what was your question? She wonders if those bugs lived during the time of dinosaurs. Uh, that's a very good question. So uh, these exact bugs did not live during the time of, of dinosaurs, but uh, cousins that would be similar and, and probably quite a bit larger certainly did. Uh, but these particular species did not. All right, great question. Let's go to Mrs. Michael's class in Glenview, Illinois, grade fours. Let me turn their microphone on. Here. Trevor, did you have a question? Yeah, but what, yeah, but like, what do you call the, the last one? Like, the leaf insect. Oh, like, okay, um, this is Trevor. Trevor, um, lean down to the mic. Trevor. What um, what gender of the leaf insect can camouflage better? Hmm. Well, I mean, in my opinion, the female here looks more like a guava leaf. She's a lot uh, wider, she's more broad, and she does probably a better imitation uh, of the leaf compared to the male who's much skinnier. Uh, would you agree, Matt? I think so. The, the male typically takes more risk as well because he is more mobile. He, his camouflage is often uh, um, well, it's good. If he gets spotted, he has more chance of uh, getting spotted just because of his behavior, of his mobile behavior. While as uh, the, the girl will move much less, and so by moving less, she, she has less chance of giving away her camouflage. Very good question. All right, excellent. So let's jump now. Let's see. Let's go to Pennington Gap, Virginia. We've got grade ones joining us. Let me turn their microphone on. How's it going, grade ones? Tell them hi. Say good. Hi. All right. Can you ask your question? Here, look at this camera here. All right. Which insect are you fascinated by? Very good question. Which insect should you not be fascinated by? They are all amazing in their own ways and all have very cool particularities that make them just so lovable and fascinating. It's hard to choose which one is the most fascinating. Excellent question. I like that answer. There's so much biodiversity. They all do pretty amazing things. Even the ones we don't really like because they bite, they're still really important in the ecosystem. Yeah, I, I, I despise mosquitoes, but yet they are still amazingly fascinating. All right, great question. Uh, Mrs. Morrison's fourth graders in Michigan. Let me turn their microphone. Oh, actually, Mrs. Morrison, uh, I can't control your mic right now. Do you mind just turning it on for me on your end? Should be a little button on the top of your screen. Yep. Can you hear us? I can. Okay. Hi, great um, This is Emma, and she has a question. Hello. <laughs> hey. Okay. Um, where do the orchid mantises usually live, or where can they be found? Uh, very good question, uh, Madagascar. Uh, yeah, I believe you can find some in Madagascar as well as Southeast Asia. Great question. All right, great question. I love their camouflage. It's amazing. Uh, let's see. Oh, I want to give a quick shout out to Mrs. Novak's class. They're joining us, I believe, from Indiana, and they're... Uh, computer is acting up, so they're watching live on YouTube. So don't forget to send me a question. I'll make sure we get it in, first graders. But um, Ms. Willing's class, grade two threes in Hamilton, Ontario, here in Canada. Your microphone is on. How are we doing, Hamilton? We're good. So this is Farah, and she has a question for you. How are bugs helpful? Was the question, are all bugs helpful? How are bugs helpful? Well, how are they helpful? Oh, 
Well, bugs, bugs provide what we call ecosystem services. And so, uh, well, most organisms do, but bugs, uh, they help in many ways. Uh, it is said that about one, one out of every three bites of food that we take uh, comes from the result of, uh, of a bug, mostly from pollination. Um, and so most bugs uh, are helpful for uh, food production, also in the control of other bugs. So some, some bugs are good at um, stopping the proliferation of uh, bad bugs. So uh, sometimes we'll use, it's called biocontrol, we'll use um, a bug to control another bug. So they're good for uh, biocontrol, they're good for food production uh, from an indirect basis through pollination, also through a direct basis through, uh, through eating bugs. Um, they also help with soil fertility, so some bugs uh, help uh, aerate the soil or decompose or um, yeah, help plants grow. Um, so there's uh, numerous reasons why bugs are useful. Uh, and there's so much diversity in the bug world that we, we actually we don't fully grasp uh, all the uses that they have for us and for the planet. All right, great question and a great answer. It's, uh, yeah, the dive diversity is staggering. It's pretty amazing. So uh, boys and girls, great round of questions. Uh, I believe there's another insect for us to meet. There is, Joe. All right. The next insect we have is a fierce spider. This is our... Oh, <laughs> as you see, he is quite aggressive. <laughs> okay, let's try to get him out here. Oh. Ah! Okay, and here he is. So there's a good reason I'm holding him on a log, and that's because if I was to hold him in my hand, he might pinch my finger. So this is a stag beetle. This particular kind of, uh, kind of stag beetle is called a deer horn stag beetle because their their big pincers here in the front look like uh, look like antlers from a deer. And so they're very fierce, they're very aggressive, they love to fight for territory, for food, and most importantly, for girls. And right now you can see that it, it's showing off its chest, so it's, it's opening its, its big pincers here, and it's showing off its chest, it's a, it's a warning. On its chest here, there's a, a bright yellow color, it's sometimes hard to, hard to see, but you can see it right yeah. there. And that's a warning. It's saying, watch out, I'm dangerous. You don't want to mess with me. And so let's say two stag beetles were to, to uh, be in front of each other. They, they would fight till one, till one would retreat um, or till one would get killed from the other stag beetle. And so while they look, while they look very aggressive, they actually just have a tiny, tiny mouth. So you would think this thing has uh, teeth, so it can, it can pinch you, but it can't bite you. This is its mouth right here, right here, oh. and it's kind of like a little paintbrush, uh, like a, a sponge mouth, and they utilize that to uh, suck up juices. They have a big sweet tooth, and uh, in nature, they'll often find uh, flowers to drink uh, nectar from, or they'll sometimes uh, find a fallen fruit or rotting fruit, and they'll, they'll suck up the juices uh, with their, their little sponge mouth. And so these are part of the beetle order, so these can fly, just like our, just like our weevil. They have a pair of, oh, they have a pair of hard wings. And then underneath those hard wings, they have uh, wings which are folded. And you can see its antennas on the side here. Oh. And let's see if we 
got something that just to show the, the sheer power. Let's see if it'll attack it. <laughs> okay, hold hold on the the stag beetle pulled in there. Hold on it and feel how strong this is. Oh. They've got quite the strength on those pincers. Oh. <laughs> Anyone gonna stick their finger in there? <laughs> Do we have any volunteers? <laughs> Very cool. Well, I want to take this moment to give a quick shout out to some more um, viewers who are watching us online. So Forest, Ontario, uh, Washington, D.C. There's someone watching in Tanzania, which is pretty cool. Well, and then Ms. Cool. Mrs. Novak's class sent in a question. Uh, it's a two-parter. They're wondering, where do you find the bugs you have uh, there? And then how many eggs does the leaf bug lay? Oh, uh, very good. Uh, so uh, well, this one, this particular bug here, our our, our deer horn stag beetle here, comes from uh, Indonesia, uh, and most of our bugs come from uh, the Southeast Asia region. Uh, most of them come from uh, the, the the tropical forest uh, down there, where it's uh, very humid and uh, where there's a lot of biodiversity, uh, and the, the climate because of the high humidity and the, the hot temperature. Uh, enables uh, these fascinating bugs to uh, grow just so so large, um, and so for the the leaf bug. Uh, oh yeah, watch your yeah. Let's go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and the the leaf bugs they uh, they'll lay uh, one egg at a time, and in a lifetime, I think they lay about. 40 eggs, and out of those, out of those eggs, not egg, not every egg will uh, necessarily hatch or make it to, uh, to full uh, maturity. Oh yeah, he's angry. Yeah. Oh yeah. All right. Well, why don't we take another swing through our classrooms and see if we have uh, some more questions? So we'll start off with our grade ones in Virginia this time. I'll turn your microphone on again. You guys have another question? Yes. Come up here. That's your question. All right. You can see it. Do all insects bite? Do all insects bite? Yes. His question was, do all insects bite? Okay. Well, all insects eat, but not all insects bite. So uh, out of the, the there's millions of, of different species of bugs and out of that only a fraction will actually bite and and of that fraction of the from the fraction of the fraction only some will bite humans so in general uh bugs are actually uh, not very dangerous to us and there's there's really nothing to fear about bugs they're just mostly misunderstood and because there are a few bugs that bite, we have a, a, a preconception that like all bugs are bad or all bugs uh, bite. Yeah. Even this is pretty friendly. All right, Mrs. Morrison, do you mind turning your microphone on for me? Yeah. Nicholas has a question for you. How many species of bugs have scientists found? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I forget the numbers per se, but it not it in the millions? Yeah, we're in the millions to it's, tens of millions. Yeah, we're in the millions, and they, they predict that there's at least uh, 30 million different types of bugs, which means that we've only, uh, that we only know of about 1 30th to, to 5 30th, so a, a very a small percentage of the, the, the total uh, bugs on Earth. All right, so any students out there, if you're looking for a field to go in in the future in science, there's definitely lots still left to learn and, and many new discoveries to make, so you should keep that in oh, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, entomology is definitely uh, uh, 
a field that is becoming more and more in demand. And if you ever dream of discovering a new species, entomology is certainly one of the best chances to discover a new species. All right, excellent. You can name the bug after yourself. <laughs> or after someone you don't like if it's a, if it's a bug you don't like. All right, Mrs. Welling's class, your microphone's on again. So this is Jackson, and he has a question for you. Hi, Jackson. Can we tell some bugs that are females and males by stripes or dots? So can we tell whether a bug is male or female by, by what? The stripes or the like polka dots? Yeah, dots. Any kind of dots. Okay, so, so the ways in which you tell whether a bug is male or female differ greatly. Uh, I would say in some cases you're, you're absolutely correct. It could be something as simple as uh, some polka dots or some stripes. Uh, in other cases, for example, with the stag beetle, uh, the males have much larger uh, horns than the females do because they're the ones wrestling each other. And so for every species, it's a little bit different. Uh, sometimes it's very different. Uh, they can have very similar colors, and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, distinguishable by by dots or stripes. It, it can come in many different forms. All right, great question. Let's go back to our kindergartens. Miss Danhoff, your microphone's on. We have Elijah with a question. How um, can bugs say how much can bugs like how, how long? How long? Uh, we hear that one more time. How old is this bug? How old is how the bug? Yeah. He's, in, he's nodding yes. So this particular bug is in its uh, last stage of life. So this bug hasn't always been a beetle. This beetle is actually the last stage of this bug's life. And for this particular stag beetle, he'd be somewhere between three and four years old right now. Uh, but, but as a beetle, uh, only, only four months old. But he spends most of his life uh, just, just growing to be a beetle. As a, as a little grub worm type, uh, as a little grubby worm that lives in the ground. All right, and so let's jump to Mrs. Michael's class again for another question. Um, okay, we've we've got a couple of real quick ones if we can. Sure. Sure, go ahead. Um, what colors can, no, what's it called again, that last one? The stag beetle. Yeah, the stag beetle have. What colors can it be? Yes. Um, yeah. Okay, so there's many, many different types of stag beetles. Uh, from our experience, I think some some black on the stag beetles is uh, very common, uh, and that would be the most popular shade. Um, and you see lots of gold and some oranges and browns, uh, very common as well. And and the other question? Yep, one more. Come on up. Um, what inspired you to work with bugs? Hmm. What inspired you to work with bugs, Max? Well. I had a great teacher in college who brought me out uh, searching bugs. We'd put uh, little pieces of meat in the ground, and then we'd come out at night with our flashlight and see what we found, and we'd set up some bug nets. And to me, this is like the, the real Pokemon. So uh, that, that's what fascinated me, and just the, 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 just their sheer diversity and the amazing shapes they have and the life strategies that they've developed to uh, adapt to their environment is just so crazy. Um, they're just so alien-like. You don't have to go into space to meet aliens. You can just look around and meet one every day if you take the time to go searching for them. Great question. All right, so we're getting close to the end of our hangout, but I wondered if we could squeeze one more insect in. Oh, we certainly can. And a magnificent one we have for you guys. Oh, 
The next one we have is our Black Knight, Homer, the Rhino Beetle. Boy, he's got good grip. Wow, look at this thing. Yeah, don't, don't put your finger in this crack here. <laughs> so they have a very tough armor. And this is their, their weak spot here. That's where they, they have a, their hinge, their joint. This is where their flesh is exposed. And so if you put your finger here, he might pinch you. Uh, so this is an Atlas Rhino Beetle. They are some of the largest beetles in the world. They're extremely strong. That's why they're named after Atlas. Uh, in Greek mythology, Atlas was casted to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders. And so the scientists named this one the Atlas Rhino Beetle because he can practically carry the weight of the world on his shoulders if he was a human. If he was a human, if we had the strength of a rhino beetle, we could probably lift a car one-handedly. Just like that. <laughs> so rhino beetles are extremely strong and they're very, very territorial. Like our, like our friend over there, the stag beetle, they will fight for territory, for girls, uh, and for food. And so, in a best case scenario, if uh, a rhino beetle was on this branch, they would lock horns and one would get tossed off the branch. But in a worst case scenario, they would lock horns and eventually one would get decapitated from the other beetle, leaving the survivor on the branch to win all the girls' food and the territory. So because they are beetles as well, they have a pair of hard wings. And underneath, they have a pair of flying wings. And this thing is pretty scary to see fly. They're not the best flyers, but they will take off, given the chance. So these open up, and its folded wings come out. Uh, it has two fixed horns here, which are actually projections from its shoulders. So it's segmented in a way that this is the, the head is actually way down here. This is its thorax, so its chest. And these are like uh, projections that are coming out of its shoulders. And this is its abdomen here. Okay. And it's very hard to see its eyes, but we can see here we have uh, another, type, another type of rhino beetle here. And you can see well the, the features you can see very well the features on uh, this type of rhino beetle. You can see how it has a little bumper here to protect its eye when they fight. Um, and this is where their, their mouth is here. So this is the head, the thorax, and the abdomen there. So we're going to take a look at its, at its mouth here. So just like the stag beetle, the rhino beetle doesn't have uh, doesn't have any teeth. It has a little spongy mouth here, and it uses that to suck up uh, fruit juices in nature and nectar. And here in the lab, we feed we feed our rhino beetle here Homer. This is Homer. We feed Homer Jello, and his favorite Jello of all the Jellos is orange slice uh, orange uh, Jello. And with this jello, we give him a few orange slices, and then he becomes a very happy rhino beetle. <laughs> All right. Well, that was great. Thank you so much for, well, helping us celebrate biodiversity. I mean, I can't think of any better uh, example than our insects. And you've got some pretty amazing and exotic creatures there in Sault Ste. Marie. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're happy to share them with you. All right. Well, we always love these events. And like I said, we can't, we can't keep the classrooms away. They love to learn about the insects. And uh, we had a great group of classrooms today from Canada and the United States. Boys and girls, your questions were awesome. So give yourselves big pats on the back. And uh, yeah, in a moment, I'm going to turn the microphone on. Uh, and let the classroom say goodbye and thank you. But I just want to thank the whole team there again. You guys are awesome. 
super knowledgeable and it was great to meet so many of uh, our insect friends today. And we just want to say thank you for it, to everyone who joined in today. All right. So here come the microphones, boys and girls. I know you know what to do. Nice and loud. Goodbye and thank you. Goodbye. Bye. All right. One more thank you, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks a lot, everyone.